Hello, welcome to video number 55. This one is on factorizing and solving quadratics where a is equal to one. Now the keywords here are factor, factorize, solve, constant, coefficient, sum, and product. Lots of words. Uh, factor is a number that fits into a given number. Um, they are in pairs in this particular uh, activity. We are really interested in the pairs of factors. Um, factorize means to put brackets into an expression. Solve means to find the value of the unknown letter. In this, it's x, uh, but it could be anything. All right, you could factorize any quadratic. It could have any letters in it, but we're going to refer to it as x in this video. Constant, well, constant is the number bit of the uh, expression. Coefficient is the, or the number that's on its own bit. All right, the coefficient is the number that's in front of the x term or the x squared term, so it's the number in front of uh, a letter, basically. Um, the sum is the result of adding some numbers, and a product is the result of multiplying some numbers together. Now, a quadratic expression has a general form of x, or ax squared, plus bx plus c. Okay, so a, b, and c are just numbers. They will be numbers. Now, in this particular video, the a value will always be 1. All right, that is a grade 5 sort of question there are questions that where it's not equal to one and it could be any other number other than one um, but they are grade seven they are more complicated so um, i won't go into that in this video but there will be one for it now the method is fairly um, systematic pretty simple to follow open a pair of double brackets and put an x in each or whatever the letter is that you need to find the factors of the constant term Choose the pair of factors that sum to make the coefficient of the x term and the product of the constant term. Well, it will always make the product of the constant term because you're finding the pair of factors. Um, and that's what factors are. Numbers that multiply together to make uh, the given number, which will be the constant. Now, put the factors in each bracket. Um, take care with the plus or the minus. So that's more complicated questions. Solve by making each bracket equal to zero and then and solving a one-step equation. OK, that's that's the process that we're going to go through. So it sounds quite long winded, but actually, in reality, we can do them relatively quickly um, if we're quite good with uh, finding factors of numbers. Uh, and again, these are just identities, too. OK, so if I'm going to factorize something, I'm just writing uh, the expression that I'm given this particular quadratic expression in bracket form. OK, now this is definitely a quadratic. It's got the three parts to it. X squared part, X part and number part. That's the constant, the number part on the end. OK, the five is the coefficient of the x term. One is the coefficient of the x squared term, as it always will be in this video. Let's get on with it. So I'm going to open up my double brackets. I'm going to put an x in one and x in the other. That's what it tells me to do in the method. Um, I'm going to find the uh, factors of the constant term. So the factors of six are I'll figure out where I'm going to do this. Let's put it in the middle here. So the factors of six are one and six, two and three. OK, now what pair of those add up to make the number that's in front of X? OK, that's what this this sentence here means. Choose a pair of factors that sum to make the coefficient of the X term. Uh, so two and three plus two plus three. Pop them in the brackets. That's what the next bit tells me to do. Put them in the bracket. Take care of the plus or minus. But they're both plus. so It doesn't matter. Uh, it doesn't matter which way around they go. Never does. So there you go. That's it. We've factorized that particular um, quadratic expression and I'll just write that answer there in the answer space okay there we go now um, in B we've got uh, this one so I'm just gonna write that and then just put my answer over there 51 so factors of 51 be 1 and 51 all right but what I happen to know is because I do play a little bit of darts I know that uh, triple 17 triple 17 gets me 51 and I know that 3 plus 17 makes 20 so darts has come in useful here uh, love love a game of darts so uh, I know that actually it's it's the numbers uh, 3 and 17 that will be going in my brackets and I know there's an X going in there and an X going in there so I'm not gonna even bother writing anything down so plus 3 and plus 17 okay so if you need to find those factors do um, if you're not sh if you don't then you can just whack the number straight in there straight away and then 36 um, factors of 36 um, that add to make a negative 15 in C. So this one is a bit more complicated. So what I will do is I'll show you this one. Let's list the factors of 36. So 36 in this in this bubble here. 136. That's 13. What have I written 13 for? 1 and 36. 2 
and 18. 3 and 12, 4 and 9, uh, 5 doesn't go in, 6 does, 6 and 6. Okay, so 6 and 6, I'm going to write it twice because it's a, a pair that we're interested in for this topic. Um, so what pair of those adds to make a minus 15? How can we get a minus 15? Well, if we had uh, minus 12 and we took away another 3, that would work, wouldn't it? All right, so both of those numbers would need to be negative. Does that make a positive 36 when we multiply them together? Well, good news is it does, because when you multiply two negatives together, you get a positive number. So this one's a really tricky one because of that negative in the middle and the positive at the end. All right. So when you've got a positive number at the end, you're, you're going to know that either both of the factors are definitely positive or both of the factors are definitely negative. OK, that's a nice little thing to think about when you, you're doing these questions. OK, rewind that bit if you're not sure what I'm talking about. All right. So there's my pair of factors. I know they're both negative. Um, I found them, just circle them, put them like that. Um, and then I'm just going to put the x's in the brackets and I'm going to put those numbers in the bracket. So I've got x minus 3 and x minus 12. OK, now moving on up to question 2, we've got to factorise and this time we've got to solve as well. And solving actually for an extra mark is the simplest thing in the world, right? So factorise it first, then solve it. Um, and let's do that. So this one I'm going to write here next to it. I'm going to put in the double brackets. I'm going to put my x's in there straight away. And I'm going to put in, well, here you can see you've got a negative number on the end. So you definitely know that one's going to be negative and one's going to be positive because a positive times a negative makes a negative. All right. Let's find the factors of 10. So you've got 1 and 10, 2 and 5, and that's it. And then how can we make a positive 3? Well, we'd have to make a positive 3 by making one of those numbers here in this pair of factors because that's the ones that would make have a difference of 3. That is um, the minus 2 because 5 take away 2 makes a positive 3, right? And this is where people could make mistakes. So there's a 2 going in that one and a 5's going in that one. And now I'm going to solve it. So when you solve it, like I said, it's really simple. This bracket is equal to 0. So what number here of x would, would x have to be in order to make uh, that bracket nothing? Well, that would have to be 2. 2 minus 2 is nothing. So x equals 2 or... And in this bracket, it would have to be minus 5. So minus 5 is the other solution to that um, there. Now, when we're solving a, a quadratic, we're actually thinking that the roots of the equation. Um, and we'll talk about that more when we do the graphs of these um, equations. Um, yeah, but that's basically just where the graph of this particular equation um, or expression would go through the x-axis. OK would intersect with the x-axis but yeah like I said more on that when we get to graphs now this one okay similar sort of thing we've got a negative number at the end so we definitely know that we've got an x in there an x in there a plus in there a minus in there but again doesn't matter which way round those plus or minus go um, and then we've got a factor of 27 so 27 this time 1 and 27 uh, 3 and 9 and that's it so what pair of factors works well it's definitely not 1 and 27 it's definitely 3 and 9 but how because that's got a difference of 6 how can we make a minus 6 well this time we're going to start at a positive 3 and we're going to take away 9 all right if you start with 3 and you take away 9 you get to minus 6 so I'm putting my 3 in the one with the positive and putting my 9 in the one with the negative and that's it now the solutions here again pretty simple minus 3 or positive 9 okay and that's that so I'm just going to get rid of those things from being in the way there and those as well might as well don't need them got the answers now um, don't rub out your work in your exam papers that would be bonkers now in this last one i got x squared minus x equals 72 and it doesn't look like it's a general form for quadratic at the moment but we can make it such we can make it so so i'm going to take the 72 that is on this side away from here oh i forgot to mention actually in these if you're solving it you, you should really have each equation here equal to zero uh, because that's the only way you can solve a quadratic is if they are equal to zero all right so then that's what we're doing in this one we're going to make it equal to zero and i'll get rid of those zeros up here as well so i need that space um, we're going to write it as this x squared minus x minus 72 equals zero all right now we're going to factorize this expression on this side here so let's get our double brackets x x 
and then how we think of the factors of 72. Well, I know that 8 times 9 makes 72, and I know that the 8 and 9 have got a difference of 1. Okay, so I'm knowing my times tables. This is all right. You're being relatively decent at maths. Uh, you could always list those factors out, and then you would spot those 8 and 9 would work. So one's going to be positive, one's going to be negative. Which one that has to be positive? Well, we need to make a minus 1, because there's an invisible 1 in front of that x, just like there's an invisible 1 in front of the x squared. So uh, I'm starting at positive 8, and I take away 9, and that would give me a minus 1 if I added those two numbers together. 8 minus 9, or 8 plus minus 9 gives me minus 1. And 8 multiplied by a minus 9 makes a minus 72. All right, so my solutions then would be pretty easy to get. Again, I've got minus 8 and positive 9, or, or positive 9. Okay, so that looked a little bit trickier. It's just a case of moving that 72 over. It's a positive 72, so take it away. It's now a general form of a quadratic. Make it equal to zero. Solve it. Done. Okay, and then let's have a look at question three. So question three says factorize and solve. Now I've chucked this one in here in A because it, it kind of goes back to the difference of two squares here. This is really complicated. I think a lot of people would look at this and go, you can't do anything with this. You can't factorize this. Well, you can factorize it. You can make it into double brackets, so you can pop it in like this. You can go x, x, so negative, so plus and minus. Now, the square root of a number, you can always square root a number. You can write it as the square root of whatever the number is. So square root of 5, square root of 5. Okay, so the answers to this one, again, really simple. It would be positive or negative root 5. All right, you could write that as this, positive or negative root 5, put the plus and minus symbol in front of the root and you've got the answer. Okay, that's it. Simple as that. But looks really complicated. Now, in B, I'm going to find three possible values of B in the quadratic expression x squared plus bx plus 16. Okay, so this just revolves around you understanding this topic a little bit. All right, uh, you know you've got to find the factors of 16 here. Okay, so 1 and 16. 2 and 8, uh, 3 doesn't fit in, 4 goes in 4 times we found the uh, pairs of factors. Okay, now um, we know that these pair of factors would have to sum to make this, and it's all positive here. Okay, so what could we uh, make by um, adding both of those numbers together? So we'd have to have a 17, wouldn't we? All right, so B could be, this number here, B, could be 17 if we add 1 and 16 together. All right, and 1 times 16 still makes positive 16, doesn't it? So 17 is one of our options. Okay, 2 plus 8, that would be 10. So there's another one of our options. And 4 plus 4 is 8, and that's the other one of our options there. Okay, I hope that makes sense. Uh, but that's just kind of understanding this topic and thinking about uh, the numbers that, the, that this middle number could be. Okay, and when you're writing your own questions on this, you, you understand that a lot better. All right, not that you have to write your own questions, but it would help for this, actually. So uh, please like the videos. If you like the video, subscribe to the channel, tell your mates about it, click the link in the description, practice your maths, keep getting better, and uh, enjoy life. Thank you so much for watching, and take care. I'll see you next time.